Hi, I'm Tim, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at this, which in this box is a new model of Grandstream's Layer 3 network switches, and it's a model GWN7822. And you're probably wondering how much it is. Well, here in the UK, they're priced at about £290, and you're probably wondering, what am I going to get for my money? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you what you're going to get for your money. So let's take a closer look inside the box now. So we have the switch itself, which is here, which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. But also in the box, you get the UK power lead. Obviously, you'll get uh, the correct power lead for your country, depending on where you're buying this uh, switch. And it has a standard three pin connection on it. So it has an internal power supply inside. We also have the quick installation guide, which is also in different languages. We also have the cable tie, which you can fix to the back of the switch here to stop you pulling out the power lead accidentally. We also have an earthing cable. So should you have earthing facilities in your network cabinet or available for your network devices, then you can use the earthing cable here. We also have a bag of screws, which are for the rack mount ears. So hopefully you can see there's uh, eight screws in there. And here are the rack mount ears in this bag, along with also some adhesive rubber feet, should you wish to mount it to a shelf. So for the switch itself, at the back, we have the standard three pin connection, which supports 100 to 240 volts AC and that's for 50 60 Hertz and then here we have the earthing terminal which of course you use with that earthing cable should you so wish then we have the grand stream label with the model number on it here at the far left side if you're looking at it from the back that is is an RPS connection which if you pull off the rubber cover which easily releases from one side you'll see that we have a four pin universal power supply connection and that works at 54 volts and that's 5.56 amps which is stated just underneath the connection there and here at the bottom we have some rings here where you can mount the rubber feet so there's lines there which designate where the rubber feet will go if you want to shelf mount it that is then at the right hand side, if you're looking at it from the front, we have two grills there and inside the grills, we have two fans for cooling. So inside there, there's two small fans for cooling. And then if we look at the right hand side, you'll see there's two more grills there. So the air will be drawn in through these grills at this side and then extracted out through the fans at the opposite side. Then looking at the front, we have multi gigabit ethernet ports. Now the first eight ports here are one gigabit and they are all PoE plus. Then we have another set of eight one gigabit ports here. And again, these are PoE plus. And then at the right hand side here in this section, you'll see that it's colored with a turquoise blue ring around these eight ports here. And these are 2.5 gigabit ports. So they are not one gigabit. These are 2.5 gigabit ports. So you get eight 2.5 gigabit ports. And they are also PoE++. Not PoE+, as these 16 are. But these eight here, as well as being 2.5 gigabit, are PoE++. So for the standard, they are 802.3BT is the PoE standard, which is, of course, PoE++. So these are extremely useful for connecting to 2.5 gigabit network devices, as is my PC, which I'm currently running. It has a 2.5 gigabit network card in it. So I'll be connecting one of my PCs to these 2.5 gigabit ports. And also my um, QNAP NAS, which I have, also has a 2.5 gigabit network card in it. So I'll also be connecting my QNAP NAS to one of these 2.5 gigabit ports. 
Now, I'll also be probably connecting at data date a PoE plus plus device to one of these eight ports as well. But that's due to be upcoming in another video, which I'll hopefully release again as soon as I can. So these 16 ports here, as I said, are one gigabit. They are PoE plus. So I will be using some of these devices to power my security cameras, as is my GWN7665 Wi-Fi 6C access point, which I'll also be powering from one of these um, ports. In fact, as the GWN7665 wireless access point is 60, it also has a 2.5 gigabit network port in it. So I'll probably be connecting that to also one of these 2.5 gigabit ports so that I have a 2.5 gigabit connection to my grand stream GWN7665 Wi-Fi 6E access point. Moving across, we also have four 10 gigabit SFP cages here. So these are certainly useful for uplinking and for connecting to other switches. So for example, you could purchase two of these GWN 7822P switches and link them both together with a 10 gigabit DAT cable or fiber cable connection between the two switches and then also uplink to your router or firewall device should you so wish. So I think these switches are certainly welcome in today's networking environments where sort of we're moving on to 2.5 gigabit with a lot of devices and also 10 gigabit. So they've provided four 10 gigabit SFP plus cages here. Then at the right hand side, we also have a console connection, which I don't tend to use, but um, you may choose to use it or you may have a scenario where you need to use the console port. So we'll just go through some basic specs so it has smart power control on the PoE to control whether it's PoE, PoE plus and PoE plus plus. It also supports deployments in both IPv4 and IPv6 network environments. And it also has reliable fault detection, device protection, dual boot, dual system redundancy, link aggregation, storm control and more. And you could also have ACL filtering on this, which it supports, and also the management options with being the embedded controller. So it has its own embedded network interface controller in this. So all you do is go to the IP address, which you'll find in your router, log into the web interface, but I will actually show you the web interface in another video. And I'll also show you it installed into my network cabinet. So it has built in quality of service for the traffic prioritization. So, for example, if you're using voice over IP phones, which require priority, then you can set up a quality of service for that. And it also supports stacking. So this is actually a pending option. So once the option is released, you'll be able to stack these switches for failover and redundancy, should you so wish. It supports 256 megabytes of RAM, eight megabytes of non-flash storage, and also 128 megabytes of NAND flash storage. For the jumbo frames, it supports 10,240. And for the PoE standards, as I've said, it supports IEEE 802.3 AF, AT, and BT, which of course, should you not know, is PoE, PoE Plus, and PoE Plus Plus as well. It also supports 14 link aggregation groups and the external redundant power supply it also supports, which is rated at 54 volts and 300 watts. The maximum for the PoE budget, so for these 16 ports here, which are the one gigabit ports and PoE Plus ports, it supports a maximum of 30 watts per port and for ports 17 to 24 which are the 2.5 gigabit poe plus plus ports this supports a maximum of 60 watts per port the total poe budget for this is 360 watts for the non-blocking throughput it's rated at 76 gigabits per second the switching capability is rated at 152 gigabits per second. 
as I've said, this is a layer three switch, so it supports switching and routing as well as the multicast QoS, ACL, and it can also act as a DHCP server as well. Now there are LEDs on the front and we have 24 LEDs which light up yellow when a device is plugged in and it is using power over ethernet. And there's also 24 green color LEDs which light up when there's data being transmitted or received on the relevant port. Also, there's an LED on each of the four SFP plus cages, which are underneath here, and they just light up green when there's an SFP plus cage in there and connected to another device. So that's basically it for this Grandstream GWN 7822P multi gigabit layer three managed network switch of course you don't have to use this managed if you don't want you can just plug it in plug your devices in and they should work no problem it's only when you need to sort of go in and configure for example power requirements if a device should require for example 48 volt passive poe or something like that then you would have to do that in the management interface which is built into this switch or for example you can use the cloud system so Grandstream have their own GDMS system, which is a cloud-based controller, which you can connect this device to, as you can connect your other Grandstream devices as well. So you have them in the ecosystem. This can also be managed as well by one of Grandstream's GCC 6010, 6010W or 6011 all-in-one convergence device, or it could be managed by a Grandstream router as well. So what I'm going to do is get this installed into my rack, some devices connected to it, and then I'll show you that in another video. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you found it useful. Take care and I'll be back again with more videos soon. So bye for now.